verses 22 through 30. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. Thank you, David. Uh, appreciate that. I think this is your first time to be a liturgist, right? Yes. All right. He did a great job, didn't he? <laughs> you it's always good to have uh, folks who are willing to step up uh, like this. And I want to also say a, a personal word of thanks to Pepper for last Sunday. Uh, <clears throat> I really appreciate you uh, preaching last week and filling in for me there uh, while we were gone, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> Jeremy said you did all right. <laughs> all right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> In this particular scene in scripture, it is winter time. The Jewish festival called the Feast of Dedication has begun. Now those of us living today might know this feast best as Hanukkah. This year it will run from December 22nd to December 30. And it marks a festival commemorating the rededication of the Second Temple in Jerusalem at the time of the Maccabean Revolt against the Seleucid Empire. Now you all know that took place during the time period of 167 to 160 BC. Now <laughs> that you've had this wonderful history lesson, <laughs> This feast is also known as the Festival of Lights. And those of you who sat through our study of Daniel will remember one of the main characters involved in that revolt, and that was Antiochus IV. Remember that name? Of course you do. Uh, so anyway, but here it is, it's winter time, and Jesus is walking along this colonnade. It's called Solomon's Colonnade. And in this scene, he is approached by a significant number of Jews. We don't know exactly how many, but it sounds as if there were quite a number who gathered around him. And <clears throat> they would ask him perhaps the most direct question of his entire ministry. And here's what the question was. How long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. That's what they're saying. If you are the Christ, just tell us. Let's not beat around the bush here. Are you the Messiah, or are you not? Again, this was likely one of the most direct questions Jesus would ever receive in the time of his ministry. But the answer has already been given, hasn't it? Already, they should know that he is the Christ, that he is the Messiah. Because not only have they been told, 
But in addition to that, there are all of these miracles that have taken place. The healing of sick people, the raising of the dead, all these things were taking place. And every one of them, Jesus reminds them, was done in the name of the Father. The problem isn't that they weren't told, they were. The problem is they didn't believe. They did not believe. And because they did not believe, no matter what Jesus might have said that day, or even if in their midst He had performed another miracle, it probably wouldn't have made any difference. You see, our belief is always a matter of the heart, isn't it? And it seems that the hearts of these Jews in particular were somewhere else. I think they were looking for a different kind of Messiah, someone who would free them from the Roman authority, someone who would step in and rule with an iron fist rather than someone who would teach us how to love one another. They were looking for something different. You know, the truth is, Jesus came to show us a more perfect way. He came to teach us how to love one another. He came to forgive us of our sins and set us on a path that is filled with joy. And yes, a path, a path that is meaningful for our lives, where we find fulfillment in it each and every day of our lives. Those who seek to live such a life will undoubtedly listen to His voice. Why? Because we are His own. We are His own. If you believe in your heart that Jesus is the Christ, you're one of His sheep. And it's such a blessing that goes far beyond any words that I can ever come up with to describe. It's interesting that I'm preaching this particular sermon on Mother's Day. Now, when I was growing up, if my mom said, listen to me, <laughs> have you ever had that experience? Oh, yeah. Martha, did you ever have to say that to me? <laughs> <laughs> when my mom said, listen to me, she wasn't just trying to fill in a gap in a sentence. She wasn't just simply saying that so that I could hear her melodious voice. She was saying that to teach me something. Or maybe to keep me on the straight and narrow. These weren't just words. They had value to them. And when we listen to Jesus, we learn so much. Our Lord's voice not only teaches us to live a meaningful life, His voice guides our paths daily. And constantly, that voice leads us to a better place, a better way in our journey helping to keep us on track, helping us to keep focused on the main thing, and that is making disciples of Jesus Christ. True believers listen to His voice because we know that He is constantly pointing us to a better way. Believers 
listen because our Lord is constantly teaching us and showing us what life is all about and that there are things more important in this life than just what this world has to offer. Don't forget that. We listen because we are His own. And He knows us by name. And He gives us life. We follow because we trust Him to guide us and lead us in all the paths of life in every aspect of our lives. Imagine with me for just a moment if everyone who ever entered the doors of this church truly listened to Christ. Would this place be a little different? If everyone who ever entered these doors truly listened to Christ, I believe this place would be a little different. This would be the most loving place on the face of the earth. Now we do pretty good as it is. But there's always room for growth, isn't there? I can imagine that this would be one of the most loving places on earth. It would be a place where people are being saved and knowing Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. It would be a place where hearts are transformed. It would be a place where people would say, I can't wait to get up in the morning and go to church and be a part of the fellowship of the believers. What a difference that would make, wouldn't it? Now folks, I'm going to tell you something, let you in on a little secret. Y'all ready for this? Now don't spread it around, it's a secret. I hope you'll spread it around, because see, usually when you tell secrets, it leaks. <laughs> and this is one I want to leak. And folks, listen. If we got up on Sunday mornings and we were truly, genuinely excited about coming to be in the fellowship of the believers on Sunday morning in church, it sure would draw more people in than going to the restaurant after the church and saying out loud where everybody can hear, including the waiter or waitress, boy, that was a lousy sermon today. <laughs> <laughs> or saying something like, I didn't get a thing out of church today. And Craig knows what's coming next. <laughs> I wish he'd pick hymns we know. <laughs> I kind of did that with Craig's permission. <laughs> but anyway, he knows my heart <laughs> and how much I love him. I love every hymn he picks, even if I don't know him. <laughs> but you know, here's the thing. We would draw far more people into the life of this church if we were excited about being here and being a part of the fellowship and being engaged in ministry any day over grumbling and complaining because we didn't like what happened in a particular setting. Folks, if everyone who entered these doors sat on the edge of their seats on Sunday morning just waiting to hear what the Lord has to say. Just waiting to hear the Word of God proclaimed and then embrace what they hear. We alone could turn this world upside down for Jesus. We could make a powerful difference, couldn't we? But here's the problem. As long as we continue to put everything else first. Do you hear me? As long as we continue to put everything else first ahead of our relationship with Christ, we will continue to experience decline. Not only in numbers, 
but in our spiritual walk as well. See, here's the thing. We Christians ought to be modeling every day what the love of God is all about. Every day. Anyone who meets us or greets us or whatever the case might be ought to know without you saying a word that Christ lives in your heart. Now believe me, I'm stepping on my own toes as well, so you're in good company here. I want people to know that my relationship with Christ is the most important thing in my life. Amen. Does not the Bible say, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these other things will be added unto you? If we seek first the kingdom of God, our relationships with our family, our friends, our brothers and sisters in Christ will be far better, won't it? If we put Christ first, all these other things that right now tend to distract us away from loving the Lord will look a little different too. Even the things we do for fun will have more meaning and purpose. Listen to His voice. Listen to His voice. Let His voice fill you and guide you every day of your life. Let His voice be your source of strength and encouragement. Let His voice draw you to a deeper walk with God because if you listen, you won't have to stand there and say, how long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you listen, you'll know that He is the Christ. Amen. <clears throat> are you listening to His voice today? Or are you listening to the voices of countless others who are saying, come with me? Listen to his voice. And if you're willing to listen to his voice this day, I'm going to invite you to come and pray. And just say, Lord, I've listened to every other voice out there. It's time I listen to yours. It's time I really fall in love with you. It's time I really said I want nothing else than to put you first in my life. And if you're willing to do that, God will touch your life. And you'll know, you'll know that He is the Christ. Let's take a moment in silence to prepare our hearts. And when we sing, you come and pray. <laughs>